So then why do people get such issues with struggling, with saying things that are against what God would say, doing things that are against what God would do, giving place? Because he said, neither give So then largely it would suggest to us by canon of scripture that everything Satan has done in your life, you gave it to him. Hi, and welcome to Stone Point Community Church, where your life is made better. Thank you for listening to our podcast and thanks for supporting the ministry. If you enjoyed today's message, why don't you be a blessing and share it with a friend? We appreciate you and pray for God's very best in your life. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, <clears throat> they have been dispatched and given authority. And as they've been given authority, they've been given authority through the use of Jesus' name. And they have now come to the learned understanding that the name of Jesus has power over every demonic thing. And <clears throat> now, I, I, I want you to understand that purely just because Jesus said it should have been enough. But it wasn't. <laughs> but when they watched it work, they returned with joy. And they're now super ecstatic. And he's like, of course it works because I beheld him fall like lightning. Mm -hmm. So then Ephesians 6, 12. Says, for we wrestle not <clears throat> against, but against, 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 against. Now, <clears throat> I don't have time in this setting uh, to explain all four of those, so to speak. But what I will say to you is that while they originate from the same place, they are not distinctly the same thing. He is speaking to levels of devils. He's speaking to levels of influence and how things function and work and operate in various different uh, uh, realms, if you will, all originated from the same devil. But they all have different influences and different manifestations, if I could say it that way. So <clears throat> Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus, and he's trying to get them to understand that you as a church have got to learn that what you're wrestling with, uh, what you are fighting against, if you will, what you are standing against is not flesh and blood. You may see flesh and blood, but there are often things that are at work behind that flesh and blood. And so he says, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers, of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high, <clears throat> high places. Um, if I could say it this way, just for us at the moment, if I have a principality, then a principality would be a region that I control. It would be, in, in other words, it would be a kingdom or a king's domain. So then if I am wrestling with principalities, then how many of you know that I could be wrestling with area that has already been taken by Satan? <clears throat> Not me, but potentially the places that I walk into, the areas that I move to, the regions And so when he talks about principalities, 
Then he talks about powers. Then he talks about rulers of darkness of this world. And then he talks about wickedness in high places. We, in the book of Exodus, we, we are not Exodus, um, I just lost it. Um, where we were talking about how he's speaking to the king, he's speaking to the prince, and he's like, I saw you in Eden, and I recognize everything you're doing. Ezekiel, thank you. So <clears throat> the challenge with all of that is none of those players were in Eden at the time. So for God to be speaking to them in saying you were in Eden, we know there's only four people that were in Eden. Adam, Eve, God, and Satan. Amen. So then for God to be making reference to Satan would then help you to understand that a lot of things that we see in this world, governments, kingdoms, uh, principalities, uh, these are all things that can be highly influenced by demonic behavior and activity. So, <clears throat> as believers, if you hold an allegiance to a denomination, uh, not a denomination, a political party, any one of them, doesn't matter, pick one, you have a problem. Because whether it's Democratic or Republican, it really doesn't matter because it's two people fighting over which slave master is, is better. That's really the bottom line. Amen. And most people don't necessarily understand that there are influences that are always seeking to get into areas of influence. Because in order to get into areas of influence, you can create a domain. If I control the king, I control his kingdom. If I control the president, I control that which he influences. And so, <clears throat> look at Ephesians uh, 4, 22. It's very easy to give online. You can scan the QR code or visit us at sec.church, fill out the required information, and you're done. He says that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. In other words, the life you used to live as the old man, he said, I need you to put that off. In other words, knock it off. Which is corrupt according to its deceitful desires. In other words, the way you used to act, the way you used to handle things, the way you used to live... And again, you see how I'm using used to because it's supposed to be past tense. Um, he said, the reason why you live that way is because you were deceived into believing that that was the way to get it done. He said it was deceitful to you. It deceived you. He said, but now that you have come into light, you ought to be operating very differently. So then in verse 25, he says, Wherefore put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. <clears throat> Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather... Let him labor, working with his hands that thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Now, <clears throat> as he is dealing, you know, we talked about Ephesians being the blueprint for Christian maturity. And as he is dealing with maturity, he's saying, if you used to take from people, he said, stop it. Do the work. Get what it is you need and then some. So you can now give to people. I want you to see what he's telling them. He's saying if you would stop taking from. And purposely learn how to give to. He said I will work this out for you. And position you in such a way. That you will have more than enough. 
to be a giver and not a taker. And he is literally mind shifting them into understanding that what you used to do when you lived your life, I got to take, I got to have, I got to get from. There are people who live their life totally under the pretenses that they want somebody to give them something. Everything is gimme, gimme, my name is Jimmy. Rob Peter to pay. And now Paul's looking for him and so is Peter. And they live in this place of always expecting that because you have, that I deserve what you have because you're privileged. Never mindful of the idea that he said, if you labor, then I will set it up so you will have more than enough that you are able to give to the ones who don't have. Right? Watch what he says. Let no corrupt communication, verse 29, proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be ye to one another, tender hearted, forgiving, even as God for Christ's sake have. So then in verse 27, he says, neither give place to the devil. And then he speaks to behavior in this entire portion of how you behave, how you act, how you handle your life, how you choose to do the things you do. He said, these are things that he said, don't you give Satan a place. So then if you have learned that you've been seated in heavenly places, I want you to pay very close attention. If you have been seated in heavenly places and Satan said that I will exalt my throne above the throne room of God. Please hear me. Where is Satan? Where is he currently? Positionally in the body of Christ. Where is he? He's under our feet. Yes? Okay, great. So, when people talk about profane things, because he's speaking to your mouth, what you say. One translation says, don't use profane things. He's talking about all of these pieces to how you live your life. And he then says, don't give Satan a foothold. Now, every one of us has always wondered at some point in time, if Satan is under our feet, we have authority over him. Why does he seem so powerful? Why does he seem to be able to do whatever he... Did I have a real church that showed up? Okay. And, and, and questioning and wondering, if God be so, then why is he so? And there's a, 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 a dichotomy of belief. It's, it, it's contradictory to the... the, the doxology we're supposed to believe. In other words, we're supposed to know that God is greater and Satan isn't. But yet and still, it seems as though Satan has such a... So then we talk about the concept of profane. We talk about the concept uh, of things that are inappropriate. If I as a pastor would get up here and start throwing out a bunch of four-letter words that are not work, but other four-letter words... Now, if I started doing that, people would be so hurt. They'd be so offended. It'd probably be on the news. Right? And they would call that profane. But yet and still, what God is talking about, as in profane, is not cuss words. He's talking about every evil report 
that comes against or undermines the power of God. So when you walk away saying, God can't prosper me, you grieve. When you'd be better shutting your mouth and saying, I'll wait until I learn. So then when you begin to speak against the things of God, when you begin to speak against the people of God, see, you're okay with allowing the world to speak against God. You're not outraged. But let a four-letter word come out. When the Bible says to not take the Lord's name in vain, you know, that doesn't mean to say the Lord's name in any statement you made. To take it in vain means to use his name as if it has no power. That's what vanity is. Vanity is, is you look a certain way, but you contain nothing. That's vanity. So to take his name in vain is to imply by your mouth and statements that he is not who he said he is. So then why do people get such issues with struggling, with saying things that are against what God would say, doing things that are against what God would do, giving place? Because he said, neither give. So then largely it would suggest to us by canon of Scripture that everything Satan has done in your life, you gave it to him. <clears throat> I'll give you a great example. If a man is dating a woman and the woman is married, and then she leaves her husband and marries this man. She has lost her mind. And so has he. Vice versa. You see it all the time. And, and you would think to yourself, how could you, as a man, want to marry a woman who was with you while you're in a relationship? Knew you were in a relationship, no matter what the story is you told. But has no regard. There's no red light. And if there's no red light, they did a study of serial killers. And they, and they, and they, in all of them with brain scans that they could get to, they found there's a portion of their brain that doesn't work. It doesn't send a signal that says, this is not right. This is purely based on secular studies. That there's a part of that frontal lobe that just doesn't click. How could you, I, I'm going somewhere with this. How could you then marry somebody who doesn't have anything up here that says this is not right? If you are with a man who will bring another woman into your bed with you, there's something wrong here. No, I need you to see this. Because he said, this is behavior that is unacceptable. And because the behavior is unacceptable, give me a second. Getting a download. It's very simple to give online. There are only five steps to follow. Step one, go to our website, www.stonepointcc.org or for short, scc.church. Step two, then click on PayPal or donate icon located at the top of the page. Step three, you are asked for whatever amount you desire to give. After you have done so, click the donate option down below. Step four, on this page, you have to notate what you are giving for where it says add a note, whether it is tithe, offering, building fund, love offering, guest offering, and so on. Step five, fill out the required details, then scroll down to the bottom of the page and click donate now, and you're done. <clears throat> he says, these things you have to avoid 
because you're giving place to Satan. So then, if you are living life in a way that is contrary to what God has said, and you think nobody's looking, you're probably right. Nobody is looking. But why would you give place to then have to fight off what you brought? I'll, 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 let me switch gears because I can see some of you just got salty. I was in, um, I went to a meeting, a church meeting, a service, and it was in uh, upper part of Arizona, and they invited this pastor in, and as he is preaching, he preached probably one of the worst messages I'd ever heard. And the reason why wasn't so much because of him in as much as you could tell, he was hurt. He was really, really hurt. And evidently he had some expectations from God that never came to pass. So years later, <clears throat> I, was, I was at, his church was in Lake Havasu. And I was at his church, new pastor. And I'm at this church and I'm there with Dr. Ricky. And he's preaching. And I, I, I smell something to the extent that it almost seemed like someone let one rip. But times 10. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm like, okay, this is just horrible. And I mean, and, and I'll be honest with you, it didn't seem natural. So I don't want you to think that it was really some, because it wasn't. All of a sudden, he stopped. Now, he's up there preaching. He stopped. And he said, I see you. And he pointed to the back of the church. And he said, you've been dogging this church for a good 20 years. He said, you have to go. And as sure as I'm telling you, it cleared out. Smoke cleared out the whole nine yards. So now I'm sitting there because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like the rest of y'all. I'm like, what in the world just happened? I couldn't tell you what he preached from that point forward. Because all I was thinking is, as soon as we get in the car, I'm going to be like. So. We get in the car. He explains to me. He says, I, he, goes, I, he says, the first thing I did was I saw it and then I smelt it. And I'm thinking to myself, wow. He said, it was a demon that had been there in that church. Now, remember I told you years before, different pastor. And the new pastor was struggling with things. With that church. Not getting a full supply. Resources not coming for the things they need people couldn't seem to stay all kinds of stuff going on and it was left over from the previous administration <clears throat> and so <clears throat> when the pastor began to yield two things it took a seat in his pulpit and when it took a seat in his pulpit it began to speak wow. through his pulpit. Wow. So then things that you allow to take a seat in your life will begin to speak. <clears throat> okay, uh, Luke 6, 39. I've been attending Stone Point Community Church for 11 years now and I absolutely love it. It's my church home. 
I have a three-year-old daughter named Mayana, and it's extremely important for me to set the right example for her when it comes to honoring God with my finances. God has been so good to me with my business that tithing has given me a steady flow of income. I'm a hairstylist and I'm fully convinced that because I've been faithful with my tithing that my clients book appointments and come in like clockwork. Before they weren't seeing me as often, now they see me on a consistent basis even after doubling my price for my haircuts. My name is Ator Benjamin and this is my tithing testimony. I'm working it. We're going to get there. We're going to get there, I promise. Luke 6.39 And he spake a parable unto them, can the blind, shall they not, can the blind lead the blind? Yes. If he could, if a blind person couldn't lead another blind person, they would not both fall in the same ditch. So the nature of being blind and leading someone else who's blind means they both fall or fail. Right? Yes, so then he says, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be. Put in the amplified, verse 40, in the amplified, please. A pupil is not superior to his. But everyone, when he is completely readjusted, restored, set to rights, and perfected. So then if he's not readjusted, restored, set to rights, and perfected, then he doesn't have the right teacher. But if he had the right teacher... A pupil will never be greater than his teacher. So now, how many of you know that Jesus, when he spoke of natural things, he was always referring to spiritual things? Okay. What makes a person, person mature is their development in the things they've learned. If you are blind leading the blind, then that means that whatever you don't see, as you lead your children they won't see it. Whatever mindset you have, they're not going to be greater than you. And, and it's funny because so many people think, I want my children to be greater than me. Yet you have all of these things that you fears and garbage you've put into them. <sighs> Kenneth Copeland told a story one time. He was sitting in his house and his son was walking across the, the, the fence. He was literally tight roping across the top of the fence. And <clears throat> Gloria saw it and she goes, oh my God, look at him. And he goes, calm down, I'll go talk to him. So he goes outside and he says, son? He's like, yeah, dad. He said, I, I reckon a man should be careful. He said, I agree, dad. And he came back in the house. And Gloria said, why didn't you? He goes, I'm not going to teach him by fear. I'm going to teach him through wisdom. Because through wisdom says, you ought to be careful. Fear says, you get down there right now. And so you say you want your kids to be greater than you, yet you're their teacher and you teach with fear. So you instill fear and then wonder why they act and, and retain just like you do because they will never be greater. So if you have limitations on everything in your life, quit expecting them to. <clears throat> so then. What he's saying is, the blind can't see further. Because if they could see further, they'd know there was a ditch. 
their perception and ability to see beyond where they are, they would know that there's a ditch there. They're blind. So then if you can't see, listen, Stevie Wonder with Ray Charles riding co-pilot can tell you that certain relationships ain't going to work. You don't have to have the discernment of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to pray in tongues. You can sit there and watch and go, that's not going to be long. But why is the person in it can't see it? Blind. They can't see further. Are you? (laughs) Okay. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Y'all got to hurry up. (laughs) Amplify, please. To keep Satan from... Go go back to uh, verse 10. This is Paul writing a letter to the church of Corinth. And he says, if you forgive anyone, anything, I too forgive that one. What I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, it's been for your sakes in the presence and with the approval of Christ the Messiah. To keep from for, he said, if I ever forgave anything, he said, here's why I did it. I did it to keep Satan from getting an advantage. He said, if I let it go, He said, the real reason why I let it go, yes, it happened to me. It probably shouldn't have happened to me. It happened to me when I was a kid, but it probably shouldn't have happened. It happened to me when I was an adult, but it really shouldn't have happened. How dare they violate this? How dare they do this? It really should have never occurred. But the reality is I didn't let it go because I agreed with you. I didn't let it go to give you a pass. I let it go because I refuse to allow Satan to keep doing to me what you did to me for the rest of my life. And so I have learned that I got to let go of or I'll keep giving him. He said, for we are not ignorant of his devices. In other words, one translation says his wiles. His plans, his strategies, his schemes, we're not ignorant of them. We know exactly how he works. He said, we're not ignorant of how that strategy works. He said, because he's looking for an advantage. One of the definitions of advantage is more favorable position. And so people run around talking about how crazy Satan is and how much of a favorable, favorable position he has in their life. And then they want to do spiritual warfare. (laughs) You sure about that? First John one. First John one. Verse two. Please. First John one, verse two. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, was now what? Unto us. That which we have seen and heard and declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. Truly our Father is with the Father, and our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write I unto you, that your may be, then this is the message which we have heard of him. And I declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say then that we have fellowship with him and we lie and we do not the truth. But if we walk in light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ and the son cleanses us from all If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, for the truth is not in us. 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word... He said that if you walk with God, you cannot walk in darkness. Right? Okay. As we release our voices, the angels hearken to our voice. If we release what God says, angels move with what God says. They do not move until you give voice to the word. We, we know that angels are voice activated. So are demons. What you can proclaim through ignorance is not the same as walking in darkness. Ignorance is, I don't know. So remember that stuff you used to do that you just didn't think and you just didn't know and then all of a sudden you find out, oh my God, that was wrong. It was ignorance. Once you walk in darkness, it means you have light because he says you walk with him in the light. His word is not once you have light, is no longer you're ignorant. It's you're purposely walking in darkness. Both of which invoke an ability of Satan to operate in your life. Only one is suicide. This is why I said, now understand the principle. If a woman knows you're married, if she didn't know, that's one thing. But if she knows it, it's not ignorance. It's a willful decision to be contrary to the things of God. And that person has set themselves against God. No matter how much fun you think you have. And to bring that into your life. And then wonder why struggle happens, incidences happen, calamities happen. And people don't get it. They're like, well, you know, God's still working on me. With with what? (laughs) Jesus has already died. He's already been resurrected. He's already ascended. The Apostle Paul didn't say, you know what? Jesus, I I appreciate you showing up. I got it. But I used to kill 10 Christians a day. I'm only going to kill one. I used to, you know, just hate and persecute Christians. Now, every once in a while, I get a hankering for it. And I'll just go handle it. And then, you know, I'll put it under the blood. No, transition happened. Life changed. It was a very different understanding. And when you are dealing with people that don't see the realities of their behaviors, they don't even care that they're willing to cross every single boundary. It doesn't matter. Nothing seems to matter. It's men with men, women with women. There's nothing that is ever concrete. And then you bring this nonsense into your life. God forbid you're that person. And then you talk about how Satan is doing this. Satan show be busy. No, bro, you're busy. <clears throat> Look at Ephesians 120. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it all full circle for you. You ready? Ephesians two. I'm sorry, Ephesians one. Verse 20. <clears throat> During this break, you can pull out your phone to leave a review on our Facebook page. Let us know about your experience here at Stone Point. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to leave one for us on Google as well. We're really looking forward to hear what you have to say about Stone Point. If you guys would get that video ready for me, please. I'll be calling for it in just a second. <clears throat> Which he wrought in Christ when he did what? And set him... In, verse 21, far, uh uh-huh, and, 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 
Stop. We wrestle not against. Are you noticing that he's still breaking down these various different. Same thing. Right. Powers, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in, but also in that. Keep going. And hath put, where? And gave him to be the, over all things. Is he the head over all things in the world? He's the head over all things in the, if we are the body, he is the head. Even if you are at the lowest point of the body, even if your little mind, you say, well, I'm just a low man on a totem pole. No problem. You are still his feet. Then where is Satan? So then if Satan is under his feet, that means he's under your feet. Yes? Okay. So then... If he's looking for an advantage, a more favorable position. Uh, yeah, let's go there. This is the good time to do that. Where is he? Jesus said that I beheld him fall from where? So then where was he? So, okay, let's go to, um, let's go to Isaiah, verse 14, I mean, uh, chapter 14, verse 13. Be up to date with the latest sermons and listen to Stone Point Community's podcast. It's also a quick and easy way to share these messages with your friends and family. Stay inspired throughout your week and listen. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend, I will exalt my throne, I will sit also upon, where? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and will be like the Most High God. Where is he trying to get to? He's trying to get to the throne. Yes? Okay. Where are you seated? Stay with me. Where are you seated? The throne. Where's he? From the very beginning, where is he trying to get to? I'm going to keep saying until it clicks. Where is he trying to get to? Where are you? Where's he at? Where did you used to be? Where are you now? So his desire is to be quickened with you so that he can get to the place he's always been trying to get to. So if you are far above it, then the only way to get to it, because Jesus said, I saw him fall. He was banished. From ever coming close to this. And now the only way he can get in. Is to get you. Hence the reason. For the attack. He is still looking for a position in heaven. Remember he said. I will exalt mine. To the sides of the north. And. Because he can't create anything he has to manifest himself in you which means you've got to hear it you've got to listen to it and you've got to yield to it this is why i am always extremely concerned when i operate in a place of getting somebody delivered from something that they don't stay in church Because what people don't understand is if I got them swept clean and we don't put back in them. You paying attention? (laughs) 
Let's run that video, please. It's just big enough to get your hand in there with nothing in it. But once you grab a hold of something, locked. All that monkey has to do is let it go. And he could be free. And, and, and the opponent, the oppressor, all he has to do is walk up and grab the monkey. There's no violence involved. There's no, we don't need a gun. We're taking people at will because all we have to do is to get them to hold on to stuff. And you are, while you're holding on to your unforgiveness, you're screaming, Jesus! And you're, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke and bind you, and you're stuck. And then you blame God as if he's not responding when the truth of the matter is, you have held on to stuff that you should have let go of. And all he wanted you to do was to let go. Because if you would let go of it, you don't need to be screaming, Oh my God, help me! <clears throat> and he said, you know what? You would prefer to hold on to it. He said, I let it go. I forgave you. Because I couldn't give him an advantage. Yeah. I, I, I don't operate this way in life because I can't give him a place. Because he's always roaming about seeking whom he... And we want to be a militant church where we're talking about all of our weapons and arsenal and power and ability and have never thought that when the Bible says he takes people at will... He ensnares them at will. You don't think that it was a coincidence that she walked by 36, 20. You thought that was a coincidence? It was not a coincidence. But because you are unchecked in your loins. Satan knew that's the button that I'll get you to touch with fire. He said that's why a man who cheats on his wife is heaping fire into his own bosom. It's bait. All of it is bait. And you reach your little monkey hand because you are curious. You want to know, ooh, what's that like? I wonder what she's like. I wonder what he's like. I, I wonder if he's good in bed. Ask his wife. The elephant in the bedroom is coming, ain't it? No, I want you to see this, y'all, because what people don't understand, all the while, while they got their hand in the cookie jar, yeah. they won't let it go, yeah. yet they're screaming yeah. scriptures. Yeah. They're rebuking and binding and casting out. Yeah. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 10.3 should now make more sense to you. For though we walk in the flesh, he said, we do not. In other words, you have to live in that body of yours, right? If your body think of stupid stuff, you got to fix it. That ain't nobody else's problem but yours, right? You know, will Jesus fix me? No, 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 that's your body. You don't want buying into this nonsense. Look, for the weapons are not, but through to what? How do we pull down strongholds? Verse 5. Cast 
against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought. Why do you think he told you that? So you wouldn't keep putting your hand in that trap. So that you would cash down imaginations, things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God. When you can sit in a church with somebody and be doing things with that person's wife or husband, you have obviously accepted a thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. But when things start happening, you'll be like, well, is God going to straight? No. God loves you and forgives you. He's, he's trying to get you right. But your other enemy, your, 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 you know, that guy that just, the other side of the coin, he's like, yeah, go ahead, do it. Let's get some. And while he's moving, you're trying to bind what you... And now you're wrestling with stuff. And then it starts moving through your house. Through your kids. You'll hear things whispered in your ear. Satan will go, they don't like you. And now you're walking around with a chip on your chest. Talking about, they don't like me. Who told you that? The Holy Ghost. For what purpose? (laughs) Why would the Holy Ghost tell you they don't like you? To what end? So you can punch them in the nose? Because that's the Holy Ghost we serve? No, you're grieving the Holy Ghost because you have learned to keep yourself undisciplined, unchecked, and now he whispers anything in your ear and you often running with it and have never thought that could be dead wrong. And then he says, because of that, you then will have evil communication out your mouth. You'll be profane. You didn't cuss. But you went and told other people something about this person because you're trying to get back at them and you've murdered their reputation, but you didn't cuss, so you're not profane. And then you wonder how Satan and his demons have the right and the ability and you believe in it because they seem to have power. And they only have power Look, look at, look at um, Job, chapter 3, verse 25. Can we put in the Amplified Classic? Bless you. So then when he says, I've not been given the spirit of fear, you have not been given a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. Do you know how many things come on the heels of fear? Bless you. Do you know how many things come on the, on the heels of fear? Did, did you know that even when someone sneezes, we didn't orchestrate this, by the way, <laughs> that saying bless you is a response because when someone sneezed during the plague, that meant they had the plague, and they would say bless you as a term to mean, I hope it doesn't kill you. That's why we say bless you. Because what we're saying is, you have the plague. <laughs> and I hope it doesn't kill you. <clears throat> we didn't orchestrate this, did we? But I, I did that because I wanted you to see it. As to the things that we do. And we are unbeknownst to us as to why we do it. If you don't believe me, look it up, by the way. And we don't even know why we're doing it. And we're constantly seeding into something that when it responds in kind, we're struggling. We're like, oh, Satan, he be busy. Look, look, watch this. Job 3.25. Any amplify. Watch what he says. For the thing which I comes and that of which I am afraid 
befalls me. I was or am at nor had I or nor was I or yet trouble and still we have not been given the spirit of but of why did God tell you that the spirit he gave you was of love, power, and a sound mind. Because Psalms 91, verse 1, put it up. We're coming right back. Remember the Bible says Job made all these sacrifices for his kids. He said in the event they messed up. If he made a sacrifice and they did mess up, is the sacrifice qualified to cover what they're messed up? Yes. And if they messed up, and he made a sacrifice for it. Does that cover it temporarily? Are they permanently delivered? No. So why does he keep doing it? Because he's afraid. Do you know how many people pray out of fear? Do you know how many people rebuke sickness out of fear? Not out of faith, out of fear. Watch what he says. He that dwelleth of the Most High shall abide... Keep going. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I. Keep going. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feather and under his wings thou shalt trust. And his truth shall be. Stop. Now, help me understand something. Job said. All right, let me, let me say it a different way. Does fear have power? No. That's why God said, you have been given a spirit of fear doesn't have power until, go back to Job 20, where were we? Ver, uh, chapter 3, verse 25. Um, put in the amplified. For the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me and that of which I am afraid befalls me. I was not. I, I was not at ease. So what gave fear its ability? He wasn't at ease. He wasn't abiding. Under the shadow, he wasn't at peace. You ever notice that certain things that come into your life that don't spook you whatsoever, you seem to overcome it real fast? It don't bother you. It's like, oh, that happened? Whatever. My God is well able. I ain't even, you ain't even going to get not another thought. And you coast right through it. And then the very thing that you was... I wish I had some people in this room that would be honest. The very thing that you have been worried about, you are not at peace. You are not at ease. You are not getting rest over it. And then when it shows up, it has power, not because it had power, but because you gave it power, because you were not aware that you have not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, a power, and a sound. Why would you need a sound mind? So you wouldn't think that you can do the things that invite him in, Can't cast out the devil you're sleeping with. Well, thank you for that one. It wasn't even a real clap. It was like. <laughs> so then, here he is. He's in anxiety. He's worried. How do you conquer what you're afraid of? And yet you bind it. Hand stuck. So I rebuke this in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I decree and declare every demon. Of... <laughs> stuck. Yeah. Just stuck. Yeah. And God's like, hold on. <laughs> 
you think in this way. You're permitting this. And I told you, I gave you the keys that whatever you... So the disciples are out there rowing. They're out there getting it. Jesus comes walking by on the water. They're like, dude, we over here dying. Jesus is like, and? You need something from me? Because I'm assuming when I told you to go to the other side, you out here doing all this crazy stuff, y'all must be like working out or something. Getting your exercise on. Because for what reason would you still be here? That I could walk past you. Read your Bible. Jesus didn't look over and go, oh my gosh. These people are struggling. Let me go help them. It says he was about to walk on by. And they cried out. Then he stopped and said, what? He came to the conclusion they must want to struggle. That's why they're struggling. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so, when he asked who believed our report, you want to believe the doctor's report when you already have one. And, and listen, all Satan has to do is emphasize the things that would instill his report. And then you'll believe that report, not because it's true, not because it's right, but because he chose to emphasize that report. Look, look at, look at, um, look at. Luke chapter, no, Mark 5. And we're going to go to, um, verse 16. Watch what happens here. <clears throat> and they that saw it told them how it befell him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said, Go home to thy end. Remember the sons of Sceva? They tried to cast demons out in the name of the Jesus that Paul preached. And do you remember after all of that happened, it says that the sorcerers put all their books together and burned them. It's in the millions as to the economic cost of all of those books that got burned because Jesus had now come into the city. You think that Paul said... The reason why I'm attacked, the reason why I have a thorn in my flesh, the reason why a messenger of Satan has been assigned to me is because of the abundance of revelation I'm bringing. He said, that's why I get attacked. And you still haven't put together that the only thing that matters is our ability to take elephant in a bedroom, whatever we do, whenever we do it, and get it out to people and get them here. Yeah. You still haven't learned it. Because the only thing that changes a community, he said, you can't go with me. You have been delivered. You wonder why he did all that, cast them in the swine. Why would Jesus permit them to have what they asked for? So it would make a big enough impact. If this man had it got delivered, 
And it, the Bible says they saw him sitting there in his right mind. Right? right. right? And they were afraid. Yeah. Who was afraid? Just the ones that saw it. Right. But when them swine, they're living, ran off a cliff. When all the millions and millions of dollars of books got burned. Uh, the world took notice. Yeah. And he said, now you can't go with me. You got to go home and talk to them people and tell them about the wonderful things that Jesus has done in your life. And you sit here thinking this is all that it is. No, every empty seat in this building should be a, a confront to you. It should be an offense to you to say, there's somebody. We have got to get people to learn and to know how Satan works. And more importantly, what Jesus has done for them. You want to change a community, you got to get them smart. Because they're walking around in ignorance. And the only way to get them out of ignorance is to bring light. Now, what they do with that light, if they choose to walk in darkness, a whole different ballgame. But at least they will have the light. And you talk about the world, you're like, well, I want to change the world. Do you? Do you really? Because when's the last time you said to somebody, hey, come on, you got to come with me. So you can get some of this. Well, I don't like it. He's mean. I mean, I heard it all. <laughs> After 20 years of this, I have literally heard it all. But guess what? There's nobody that fights for your life the way I do. There's no one who believes in what you are capable of than I do. And I would live and breathe and die in my belief that if you want to change the world, you're going to have to bring people's knowledge yeah. up. Amen. Because what keeps them in snares, it's not, we're not a militant church. We're not fighting against the enemy. He's at war with you. You are not at war with him. But if people don't know any better, they're opening doors. They're allowing him to come in. That they're trying to then spiritually warfare against and they're like, oh, well, we'll just, we'll pray them out. Well, wait a minute. First of all, how are you going to pray them out when you're afraid of them? <laughs> Who told you to pray them out? Did the spirit of fear tell you to do that or did God tell you to do it? Well, it had to be God. How do you know? If he sets a table before you in the presence of your enemies, what do you think he's telling? He didn't tell you to go deal with your enemy. He told him, make them watch. And so many people, they're looking to understand demonology and angels and how, it's like, <laughs> with all due respect, you give them too much regard. You operate in this place of fear. You, you know, someone in your family died of something and you start getting the same symptoms and all of a sudden you're afraid. It's going to happen to me. Spirit of fear. You thought the symptoms came before the disease when the reality is even when the symptoms showed up the disease wasn't there it wasn't there until you became afraid of it it didn't have any power until you started running from it it had no abilities people you know you, you have sick people that come to you and say hey Pray for a good report. What are you talking about? Pray for a good report. We got one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Isaiah 53 1 says, Who has believed our? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? People will say things like, Oh, so and so died early. The Lord must have needed him. For what? What purpose would God be snatching people off the earth early? Because he needed them. For what? He needs a new gardener? Because the old one died and went back to him again? 
I mean, you you you're, you've got to understand the things people say and the things people do that make absolutely no sense. And it's rooted in the wrong belief system. And Satan runs around with impunity, keeping you bound up. Opportunities can't come your way because you're bound with fear. You're bound with nonsense. You went through a problem, a struggle, having a situation occurred. Now you can't move forward. Missing out on stuff because you're afraid. And then wonder why it has such power. And then you think it has power. It don't have a lick of power. You gave it power. So stand up. I tried. I didn't get there all the way, but I tried. I often wondered why God brought me to Arizona. I did. I really did. I, I would not, I'm not joking, not playing. I really wonder, my like, Lord, why? Of all of the places, there's no ocean here. There's no beach here. Yet. <laughs> And I'm like, Lord, what is going on? And it is often in your assignment, you begin to realize the purpose of your assignment. Your moments of obedience are often not preceded by moments of information. (laughs) That's the nature of faith. And when you begin to realize that you were put here to bring light to a dark place. You probably would not know the difference until you have gone to places in the Bible Belt where Christianity is not hidden. It's very clear. You wouldn't know it until you've traveled in places like Oklahoma where you know people will say, Merry Christmas. They will say, God bless you. They will say things like, have a great day. May the Lord be with you. They'll say things like that. That'll take you aback because you're like, wait a minute. Did they say what I thought they said? And then you get to a a territory, an area, uh, principalities and powers. You get to an area that is not, um, Christ has not proliferated, nor has he gained control And then you begin to see the opposition that you have in order to bring light. Now, as a pastor, you have a couple of choices. One of which is to move to a different place that is more accepting of spiritual things and have an easier life. Which I know many who have done. Many have left this town and went somewhere else and built ministries that were highly successful because they were tired of fighting against the spiritual wickedness, the principalities. I'm just being honest with you. And I wouldn't lie to you and tell you that I haven't thought the same. I would never lie to you and tell you that. Because I thought to myself, it'd be easier if I went places that already are receptive and willing to hear, that wouldn't get offended when you check people. But then I realized I wouldn't have a job. You know, I've, I, you know, it's like people saying things like, what if I said, oh, I'm not going to go support my favorite football team anymore. You want to know why? The coach never called and checked on me. But people do that in the church all the time. People make up all kinds of crazy stuff. They'll go to a stand and paint themselves half one color and half another. We were watching a football game. I think it was the Ravens game the other day. And Ari goes, what is that all over their face? I said, they're fans. Can you imagine what would happen if people became fans of Jesus like that? 
And so I begin to realize that there is always success in your assignment. And so like I told you, I, I would not lie to you and say that I've never thought, because I have. But I've never moved on it. Because I know that in my assignment, there's success. And when you move outside of your assignment, you begin to fight devils that you were not anointed to fight. And a lot of people, the reason why they're losing battles in their life is because they've stepped out of their assignment. And now they're fighting devils they weren't equipped. When God anoints you, he anoints you for certain things. Al used to say this to me all the time, and I don't think he realized that I used to get tired of it at first. And serious, but I think he was saying it because he was inspired by God to keep telling me. Because he would always say, you say things that other... He would say that to me, and I'd be like, to the point where in my, in my brain, I'm like, oh, shut up. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it was Holy Ghost inspired. Because what he was telling me was what God was trying to get me to see is the reason why I put you here. Is because you will say what won't be said. And if I want him to raise up people within this principality, we've got to have a body that is willing to go after it. We've got to have a body that is understanding their assignment and is willing and able. Now, I would lie to you and tell you that the attacks are easy because they're not. They really aren't. But I'm built for this. And the point I'm getting at is, so are you. We have an assignment in this area. Did y'all hear the relationship advice we got? <laughs> terrible. Yes, terrible. You have options. You have, op- you have opportuni- opportunities, not options, opportunities. You have the ability to affect other people's lives. Yes. That's why all these things were given out to you, invites and so forth. You have an opportunity. Don't miss it. Because if you want to change a community, you're going to have to bring Christ to the forefront. It's not my job to change the community. It's not your job to change the community. Our job is to get their attention. God will do what God will do. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the word. We thank you for the things that we're moving in. We're starting to see, as you pull back the cover, the deeper things concerning how Satan moves. And we are absolutely clear that we're not a militant church. We have the victory. And we're not going to let deception cause us to think that we don't. For we are crystal clear and we're getting clearer by the moment. We're not going to be ignorant and we're not going to choose to ignore light and walk in darkness. But we're going to walk in the light as you are in the light. And your word tells us we'll qualify for more. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's message. I hope you'll subscribe so you can receive the latest podcast to keep encouraged and inspired all through the week. Help us to continue to share the message of hope with those all around the world. Visit scc.church or click the link in the description to partner with us today. We hope you share this message with a friend and be sure to follow us on social media. We're praying for you. I know God's best is still ahead. We will see you next time.